uh, let's get started with the first topic of the stream, which is going to be another quick review. This one is going to be on Full Metal Panic, just the first season, and again, non-spoiler review. Although I'm sure if you know a Full Metal Panic, uh, Full Metal Panic, you probably watched it already. So let's uh, let's get into that. Now, before I even go into like the story of Full Metal Panic or the characters, conflicts, any of that stuff, I just want to say at top of the, top of the bat here, like the reason why this anime is so good or the great triumph of it is the fact that it blends so many different genres together seamlessly and doesn't come out of place. I know that like Kogia does the same thing, but I find that Full Metal Panic does it a little better. And if you want more specific details, so Full Metal Panic is a, it's like two part story or it's like two holes, two halves rather. One half of the story is a high school slice of life comedy. The other half is literally a war, a war, uh, a dramatic war story. And you would think if you had these two opposing uh, things, it wouldn't work in an anime, but it does in Full Metal Panic. It's, it's so well done. I was actually impressed uh, when I first watched it. A friend of mine recommended. He said like it's it's kind of polarizing. I guess some people don't like it. Some people do. Uh, I personally fell in love with it the moment I started watching it. Very funny story. The the comedy and the, the slice of life stuff never ever took away from the war stuff. When the anime wants you to you know take this seriously, it it makes you take it seriously and it wants you to laugh. You laugh as well. You don't. I never thought there was an issue with that. And I, I think. It did a little better than Kogi House, which I know has been criticized for that. Uh, Full Metal, uh, not Full Metal Panic, Full Metal Alchemist, rather, has been criticized as well for having too many comedy moments intertwined with the serious stuff. I think if it's done well, there's nothing wrong with it. So that's like the, the first thing about the story I wanted to discuss. Now, in terms of the, the characters, again, not, no spoilers here, but I like all of them. It's not a large cast, kind of like the one I talked about uh, last week in, uh, was it Trigon? Yeah. So this one, it's... You have a uh, uh, Sosuke Sagara, who is the main guy. He's really funny. He he plays the fish out of water scenario or character where he's not used to being in high school. He's been in war his whole life. I'm not gonna say the specific details gotta be spoilers, but he's been in battle since he was a kid, and because of that, he doesn't understand high school at all. There's even a joke about like a, a condom. He was saying that yeah, when I was in the army, I used it to feel like a uh, it can fill it can hold one uh, liter of water. So the point, he just doesn't understand what high school life is. So it's funny they have to put him into a situation where he has to watch uh, Chidori or Chidori. They keep pronouncing her name weird in the dub. But anyway, he has to uh, protect the main female in the story, Chidori, for a specific reason. Again, not going to say why. And so he has to go into high school. And because he's so used to the battlefield, he's not used to high school life. So everything he deems as a threat isn't. And it leads to some of the funny moments in the story. Uh, early on, for example, he goes into the, the girl's softball changing room and pins down uh, Chittery because he thought there was a threat, even though there wasn't a threat. And it was just really funny because he doesn't understand that how high school life is. And, and his uh, two, uh, not support, his, I guess, two soldiers that work beside uh, him. Well, one is, is, is actually his, his superior, which is Melissa Mile, and the other one is Kurtz Weber. And they're trying to explain, like, what are you doing? He's, like, taking unnecessary hits for uh, for no reason. But it, it's really funny, and the thing about uh, Sasuke is that when he is like in combat, the guy is an excellent uh, mecha pilot, and they use arm slays, which they're kind of interesting. They're they don't have quite the uh, I guess a little transition here to the 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 mecha stuff. They don't have quite the finesse look at say a Gundam or a Eureka Seven or even a uh, well not Eureka Seven a uh, Kogias. It's more uh, state. It's more normal looking. Uh, mechs. They have like a, a pretty stable, uh, I guess, a body suit. There's like cool um, displays at the top. And one thing I like about the story is that if a character looks to the right or the left while they're in the, the mech, the arm slave, the screens will actually flip. So when you're looking, you actually can, like, it follows you around. It, it's it's a really subtle thing, but I appreciate it when they make the, uh, the mechs really uh, awesome in these stories and give them like a higher functionality. In terms of like what they can do, they're not as as say, powerful as the ones in Kogias. Although the Lambda driver is pretty OP, I'm not going to go into full details about that. But that's one thing that is the rest of it. It looks like standard military stuff. It makes you think that this could actually exist, even though the story does question how this could exist. And again, I'm not going to explain uh, anything related to that. And then of course you have the the captain. Going back to the characters, the main person who runs uh, Mithril, by the way, that's the organization that their whole goal is to 
Uh, they send mercenaries to stop different conflicts and war. Kind of like if you've seen Double O, it's, it's just like Celestial Bing. In fact, I watched um, Full Metal Panic first and then Double O, and I saw so many parallels between the two. And I, I guess this was a, uh, I guess it was a, uh, not a subgenre, but a, a trope that Mechas kept doing, which was to have a, uh, an organization that stops war. And I, I guess that's just a thing that was done uh, during that time because Double O does it, and so does Full Metal Panic. But anyways, back to the point. So Mithril's organization, they essentially help out eliminate conflicts, and they do this through sending out mercenaries. Their leader is T Testarossa, who is 16 years old, the same age as uh, Sasuke and uh, Chittery. And there's a lot of funny stuff with that as well. She's interesting because as a captain, she's obviously, she makes decisions. She's quite intelligent. There's another reason why she's in charge. We'll discuss that reason. But she's also still a child, so she acts up. She has uh, certain desires for certain characters. I'm not going to say who. Um, she's actually more weaker in appearance, like physically, which they do make fun of sometimes in the story, herself included. Uh, which is, you know, it, it adds an element where she's like very, she's more vulnerable than you would think when you first meet her. But he's a good character, and that's the thing. I like all the characters in this story, specifically the main ones. Even the side ones are good, too. There's these two captains. I, I don't remember their names. Um... No, not captains. They work under uh, Ted Rosa, these two older guys. And they're very interesting guys. They're very interesting characters as well. So I, I definitely like the side people. And, of course, the main villain, which is uh, Garn. I think it's his name, Garn. He's uh, he's really cool. He's this guy who doesn't give a darn about anyone else. He's looking into a specific thing. Again, I'm not going to say what that is for spoiler uh, purposes. Or, yeah, to not spoil anything, rather. But he's really badass. He's got this cool scar on his face. He pilots a... Uh, uh, a really cool arm slave, and he uses the Lambda Driver to disgusting um, results. And he, every time he comes into the story, you know Biz is going to pick up. Like JR always says about Triple H, you know, Biz is about to pick up, and that's how you know things are not going to go well. Now, I don't want to go into spoilers, but there's like one conflict in this story. It takes place rather in the middle of the, in the, middle of the anime, and it was, it was really intense, and it, it really proved the point, which I said earlier, which is that this story can go from like, a comedy slice of life to a war zone. And it, it just, it's seamless because I was laughing with Chittery on the beach with uh, Mao and Kurtz. And now all of a sudden, you know, we are fighting in a, a Hamajistan and it was, it was really intense stuff. Full Metal Panic is pretty quick to, it's like 24 episode, uh, 24 episodes. I got through it very quickly. Each episode is, um, Kind of a self-contained story. There are some things that transfer from each episode, but you can definitely watch them. I wouldn't say in any order, but there's like there's like a couple two-parters, and then it kind of moves on. They nicely put in, I guess, filler episodes between the different conflicts to kind of like let you catch your breath, like the characters did after the major conflicts. Uh, you might one critique I could definitely see people saying is that you know after a major conflict, why is everyone so I guess calm and happy about it in the next episode? Well. I think the answer is obvious because they, you know, they want to, again, catch your breath with the filler, but also the fact that they probably did discuss it, but, you know, the show must go on, as they say. There's, like, one scene where they, they basically tell you without telling you, if that makes any sense, that they're obviously thinking about this stuff, even though the next scene they're having a fun time in high school. Never bothered me, but I could definitely see some people uh, critiquing that. Uh, one person I forgot to discuss with the characters is... Uh, Chittery herself, she is a stereotypical Sundara, very aggressive, but warms up to the, you know, Sas Sasuke as the story goes on, always attacks him all the time. She, I mean, if it wasn't a slice of life moment where she's attacking him, you know, like comedy purposes, he pro she probably would have killed him at this point. Baseball bats that, I think it's a fan she hits him with, or paper. She threw the base, the first base path, uh, first base rather, at him. And she's always attacking him. I... I know it's supposed to be funny, but I, I never, I never really got into it with um with, with Chitter, Chittery's character. It's one of the reasons why I don't. I love this story, but she she really pisses me off. At least with Second Raid, and I'm not gonna discuss that in this review, but at least in that one, she was more tolerable. And, and she, yeah, more tolerable in this story, eh, not so much. I will definitely say between the two halves of the story, between the high school slice of life comedy and the war area, or I guess the war zone aspect, I preferred the war part more, which is why I watched the second raid and skipped Fumofu, which, as far as I know, Fumofu not only is a spinoff story, meaning it doesn't actually continue the story in any meaningful way. It's a, I guess it's a filler, but also it's all high school. And I, I, 
I wasn't too interested in uh, seeing that. I mean, it's funny with Testarossa and Sasuke, but Chittery just really drives me crazy. And it's annoying, too, because there are moments in the story when she's not being completely annoying. She's actually a, a good person. And she, I mean, she's not evil, but I'm just saying she's actually good to listen to and, and the way she interacts with the characters. But man, her uh, Sunra stuff, it gets a little, uh, I can't tolerate it sometimes. Uh, overall, though, if you remove that one aspect of the story, I really enjoyed Full Moon Panic. I definitely recommend it. It's free on Tubi TV. I believe it's on Funimation as well. Uh, it's a fantastic anime. Definitely 8 out of 10. Definitely recommend it. If you like Mecha, if you, if you like Code Geass, you like the whole slice of life aspect between high school and then a war zone area, then you'll, you'll like Full Moon Panic. It translates very well, which is probably why I enjoyed it when I went into it. Uh, so that's my Full Metal Panic review. Uh, next week, in honor of Halloween, we're going to discuss Helsing Ultimate. I thought about it this whole day, like, what are we going to discuss? Helsing Ultimate seems very appropriate for Halloween. It's one of the reasons why, what's that, uh, what are they called? Uh, Team Four Star did their whole abridged series of Helsing Ultimate. So that's the one we're going to do for next week.